Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. And in this video, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for cleaning up in the elementary art room. The first one is whenever I'm doing some gross, messy cleanup, I wear gloves in my classroom. This helps my hands from drying out and it keeps my nails looking good. And the tip I'm gonna share is something that I like to do at the end of the day. When I notice my tables are getting that gross, disgusting texture from the glue. The first thing I do is that I wipe off my tables with something like a Clorox wipe to loosen up the glue. And then my secret weapon is the scrapers that I saw the custodians using. I got one of these for myself and then I would just simply run this over the tables to loosen up any glue, give it one last wipe, and then that gross, disgusting texture is gone. My favorite tool for cleaning up with students is baby wipes. And I include these on my list at the beginning of the year as something that we need to have donated from families. I include baby wipes as our number one most needed item, but I also have pictures of other items that we could use as well. One thing I would encourage you to include is real paper towels. When you have a big spill, those school paper towels just don't cut it. I also include things on the list like egg cartons and Greek yogurt cups. So there are items that don't cost any money and therefore all families can help out in some way. Don't be shocked if you don't initially get a lot of baby wipe donations at the beginning of the year, give things a month or two because a lot of families spend a lot of money on back to school supplies and maybe they weren't anticipating also helping with art. So a month or two into school, send a half sheet just reminding about those baby wipes again. I include mine on an Amazon wish list and I often will have families buy an entire case and then because it's so heavy, just have it shipped right to school, which makes it really great for our art room. Now we use these in a couple different ways. Even though we have sinks in the art room, it's sometimes easier for little kids to use these to really remove paint ink from their hands. We also use this for cleaning, you know, elbows, knees, pretty much anywhere paint could end up. We use them for wiping tables. At the end of each class, we'll have the kids wipe the tables. We also use these for the floor. So kids just love this one. If there is, you know, spills of glaze or it just got really messy with printmaking, we have the students open up a baby wipe and set these down on the floor and then put one foot on top of each wipe and just ice skate around over top of the paint blobs and splotches that they see on the floor. They just really love this and it keeps me in good standing with the custodians. I think one of the secrets to an elementary art room cleanup time is giving everyone a job so that they are busy and you have less misbehavior. So I will often announce that if students are done cleaning up, they should be a wiper using those baby wipes or they should be a sweeper. And underneath my sink, I keep a bin of these small little brooms and dust pans that I got off of Amazon. And students can use these to sweep up items on the floor or even sweep small pieces that we've been snipping um, on our table, small pieces of paper, sweep them right into their dust pan and then just dispose of those. Students really like this and I think it's a way for them to really feel as though they are helping. Another great cleanup strategy is to have your student helpers pass out table trash buckets. So what this is, is just a small container that you label as the trash container. And this lives in the middle of the table as students are working. They don't have to get up and go over to your recycling bin to throw things away. They simply dump their trash as they're working into these small containers. And at the end, you dump this out into the recycling bin. I'm often asked how I keep my tables clean when frequently having students use baby wipes to clean the tables. Occasionally after school, I am using something such as a Clorox wipe and a scraper to remove any of that glue texture. But when it comes to stubborn stains, things that I've found that worked are the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers. These are simply white sponges that you get just damp and then you can wipe off um, pencil marks on tables crayon on table comes off really well with this 
and also it works very well with Sharpie. There is a generic version of this that I've seen at the Dollar Tree and it works just the same as the name brand. Another thing for stubborn stains, if you haven't tried it yet, hand sanitizer. This works like a charm when I've had ink stains or like marker stains on tables. Hand sanitizer has taken it off. One of my most frequently used cleanup tips is covering the tables. I will use this brown roll paper and I will tape this down on all of my tables. I've taught my students how to remove the tape and roll this up like a burrito, keeping all the toppings, AKA the mess, the clay dust and the paint inside. So we're simply rolling up the mess and then just throwing that paper away. Now I do have situations where I have back to back to back to back classes. So I will at times put the paper down because that's a great strategy, but I will put a tablecloth, a plastic tablecloth on top of it. And these are really great because they can be easily wiped off. So this lasts me a little bit longer. Um, this is one that I found on Amazon, like a tablecloth on a roll. It's that same plastic tablecloth that you see at the party store or Dollar Tree, but you can roll this out and cut it to size. So there's a little cutter in there, just like there is on Saran Wrap. So you can make it exactly the size of your tables. I found that this can last me a few days with this setup and help me get through some of those messy projects. And cleanup is a snap. This one you're going to want to try if you haven't yet. And that is a paintbrush hot tub system. So this is simply a really nice and sturdy dish pan. You squirt a little bit of dish soap in, you add some hot water, and then as your students are finishing up their printmaking or their painting, they're just throwing rollers and paintbrushes into that hot tub. What I found is, is this cuts down on a lot of the mess of students helping you to clean up. Um, when I had students cleaning rollers and cleaning paintbrushes, I was getting ink and paint and water all over the countertops, all over the floors. It was making a bigger mess than what it was worth. So I just have all of the tools get turned in to this bin and I let them soak. I have found that the rollers, I just have to rinse them off if I let them soak for about an hour or two. So that's a job I usually do myself. For the paintbrushes, once that is full um, of paintbrushes, I will dump out the water, keep kind of changing it out with clean water. Simply when I've got a bunch of dirty paintbrushes in there, I'll just shake it around, make sure that the water gets everywhere in there and keep dumping out and changing out that water. Kind of like I'm simulating a washing machine and I can wash all of those paintbrushes quickly at the same time. When I'm washing the paintbrushes, I will often use this little over the sink holder. So I'm placing all the brushes that I'm done washing right there so that they can start drying. And then the next morning when I come in, my students can help me sort those and put them away. Encourage your students to clean up as they go. So sort of build this into your directions and into your lesson. For example, I recently had my students drawing out with pencil a region of Virginia. Now, once they sketch their idea out on top of their sky painting, I had them put their pencil away before they went to get a paintbrush. And I just stated the reason being, we don't want to get paint on the pencil. So all the pencils were put away by the time that all the students were painting. So we didn't have extra mess at the end. So if there's any steps that you can build in when you no longer need a supply or material, stopping students at that point and having them put things away before they move on to the next step can really help you so you don't have a gigantic mess at the end of class. A major cleanup strategy for me to help me maintain my sanity is that as students are finishing up and we're doing something really messy, like tables are covered, we're doing printmaking, we're doing clay, I have the students clean up their artwork, 
their own personal materials, have them wash their hands, and then check in with me. I'll often give them a task such as going to all of the sinks and checking to see are there any paper towels laying around or helping a friend. But when I'm really ready for them to move away from the mess so I can just focus on the students that are still working with those messy materials, I have them move to my carpeted areas in my room. I have a big carpet in the front, and then I also have a smaller carpeted area in the back of my room that's like a take a break spot. That's where I store these little lap desks. I got these at Michael's. I do think they consider it a summer item in their seasons so look nor near like the mid to end of summer to get these on sale you can get them for as low as three dollars when you catch them on sale um i would recommend storing them like this in that little plus sign when we were just stacking them the way that they were in the store they were getting stuck uh to each other with just like the force that some kids would put on these um when they're putting them away and some of them were breaking but since we kind of discovered this formation all is good. So they would move these and sit at the front carpet, maybe with a piece of free job paper um, or um, a little, you know, small paper craft that they can cut and color with. There's little pockets, of course, on the side where they can keep some materials that they are using. I also will get out things such as Legos and magnet tiles for students to play with to get them to be encouraged to clean themselves up and kind of move away from the mess and the madness. That way I can, as students are finishing, help them get finished, help them to move their artwork. And the kids that are done are in a different area of my room and they're occupied um, and taking care of themselves. This is also great because then as those slower finishers are finishing up, they can be the ones you know that help me to take the paper off of the tables and put back the last few tools. But that way I have less hands helping me and I get a little bit better quality help that way from my students. A strategy that I do not use often, but when I do, man does it work, is mystery cleaners. Now, I only use this at the end of the quarter. So at the end of the quarter, I have what's called a ketchup and a pickle day. I've got more information about this in another video, but overall, it's a day for students to catch up on their work, and then they get to pick and choose what they want to do. It gets messy. So on that day at the end, right before I announce the cleanup, I note a few things, maybe five things that are out of place in my room. And then I watch to see what students will clean up those mystery items. I silently write their name down. And then as they're lined up, I announce what the mystery item was and then who was the person that put it away. And you could add, you know, the items to the list and watch them as you go. Um, you really can make up whatever rules that you want for this but I don't choose just the best cleaner because that's really hard to choose I make it more that it's about luck and I explain to my students that the more things that they clean up and they put away the more chances they might have to be the winner now for my prizes I will buy things from oriental trading which is like an online party um, website they have a lot of little prizes and things they have some Crayola items my students really liked these fun bookmarks that they had um, they had rainbow colored pencils on there, or these may have been purchased from Amazon. Anything that is from Amazon, I will be sure to link um, in the description down below. So make sure you're checking that as you're watching the video. Target Dollar Spot is great. Um, students really love those tiny mini erasers or stickers. I mean, it really doesn't take much to entice them and get them excited about cleaning, and they're excited to win a prize. The only other time in my class when I use the mystery cleaners is if there is an instance where students are having to clean up a really big mess and like it's not their mess like something happened you know the kindergartners in the class before spilled a bunch of paint or something whoever in the next class you know offered to help me out or jumped in and noticed it themselves and cleaned it up i might give a prize to i also recently had a situation where i opened a cabinet one morning and like six thousand beads just rolled across the floor and it just left them and in my first class i had them come to the carpet and gave them their lesson and then explained we couldn't really start the lesson until we cleaned up the beads and that i would be watching to see you know who found some of the mystery beads and they would earn a prize so in my classroom that's how i use it you could use it every single week um, if that works for you i just don't like to have to deal with the prizes or continually have to pay for them but that is completely up to you. It's definitely something that is worth trying. We are art teachers. To be successful at cleanup, 
we need to make cleanup visual. So you need to teach your students what things look like when they're cleaned up. That means as part of your lesson, you need to show them visuals. This is what it looks like when all the scissors are put back. This is what it looks like when the erasers are taken care of and they're put back the way that I like. And create systems so that students can maintain this for you. I'm going to be popping in a lot of pictures here on the screen. I keep my scissors in an over-the-door um, shoe organizer. So my students already know if one of those scissors is missing, it ties into our happy and sad board, our behavior management system, that they lose points. So they're already over there when we're cleaning up going, hey guys, we're missing three scissors, and they're all looking around for them without me getting involved. Same thing with my erasers. They know if they lose an eraser, it's a frown. So they're already looking, putting those back maintaining that themselves with my pencil cups i have a little circle in pennsylvania where my pencils live so they can tell if one of the pencil cups is missing um, with my water cups i have a visual that i have hanging up over on the wall but i will share that visual as well that i don't want my students to stack my water cups up that i want them made into a little pyramid so that they can all dry and how that looks inside of the cabinet i'm teaching that at the beginning of the lesson if you want more tips and tricks to how to make your cleanup less chaotic make sure you check out my video how to avoid cleanup chaos next mm -hmm.